Well, hello there. Good evening. Welcome to another Spitfire session. It's Steve here. And this, as we get back to business with uh, the county season just a couple of weeks away, club cricket got going at the weekend. I hope you did well if you played uh, a couple of days ago and your legs don't feel like they're made of concrete. Uh, with everything kind of getting back to normal-ish, uh, this will be the last of the Spitfire sessions, but only for the time being. I don't want you having a breakdown or anything, so do not worry. They will be returning. There'll be more details on that to come, but this is something we're going to be looking to do as a regular thing, particularly as we work our way through the winter months. But for tonight's Spitfire session, as I say, we are getting back to business. I'm going to introduce our panel to you in just a moment. These Spitfire sessions, in conjunction with Shepherd Neve Spitfire, have been running since uh, April. Thank you very much to all of you for logging on, for watching, however you've done that on Zoom, Facebook Live, or later on on YouTube, and for all the questions you've sent in. My sincerest apologies, because we haven't been able to get through anything like all the questions that you've sent over, but there have been so many. So thank you for those. Uh, as we mentioned, cricket getting back to normal, county season a couple of weeks away, test match at the weekend, club cricket's back now as well. And the other bit of good news to add to that is that Shepherd Neems pubs are reopening and I think I'm right in saying that the uh, Shepherd name online shop is still going as well so log on you can get your favorite stuff uh, delivered to your house star question we'll be winning some uh, Shepherd name stuff a little bit later on the sender of that star question that will be the final question of this uh, session so I'll continue thanks to Shepherd need to Spitfire Facebook live again tonight zoom again tonight as well so you can get your questions over while we are chatting right let's crack on and introduce the first of tonight's panelists as we deal with getting back to business we're going to introduce first of all a man who made his senior debut in 2011 a century for the england lions at the spitfire ground against sri lanka a three years ago in 2017 and more recently this right arm was medium pace bowling has become a differential it says here for the club over the past couple of years as well as of course all those important runs at the top and in the middle order a vital part of Kent's game a very good evening to Daniel Bell Drummond DBD how are you good evening now it's good to be on on how are you doing we're good thank you it's great to see you it's been far too long great to see you uh, next up let's introduce a man it says here I didn't write this a man who has made a name for himself as a powerful batsman since his Kent debut in 2007, consistently proven his ability as a finisher in <laughs> limited overs competitions, standout T20 performances against Hampshire in 2015, or oh, yeah, what performance that was, and again last year. Uh, two examples of this left hander's capability under pressure. Beckenham based this person became the club's first ever homegrown player to sign a white ball only contract for the 2020 season. Even better, it's only going to be two months. Good evening, Alex Blake. Hello, Stephen. How are you? <laughs> your hair. Your hair. We were having a hair discussion probably 20 minutes ago. How do you do yeah. it? You haven't been to Barbers. You look immaculate. I've um, used a bit of YouTube um, tutorial action to work out how to do the sides. I haven't actually cut the top, but it seems to be doing all right. It's just a bit long. I have to wear a hairband for exercise, but it's going all right. <laughs> Hairband. Oof. Great to see you looking at uh, videos online anyway for um, a useful reason. Now let's introduce some of our third panellists here who joined the county head of the 2018 season and became the club's 216th capped player that same year after outstanding performances with the bat and in the field, particularly during that run to the one day cup final. Former South African international Heino Kuhn has brought a wealth of experience to complement this talented crop of Kent players. Hi, no, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Steve. Uh, well, thanks on you and welcome to the other three. <laughs> Indeed. Especially now the last person we're going to introduce you logged on about 30 seconds ago. Darren <laughs> Stevens is with us tonight who joined Kent in 2005, having already been a pro for many, many years before that. 586 appearances so far for Kent, winning trophies and promotions. A huge, who wrote this? A hugely popular player with the club's members and supporters. Darren Stevens has over 20,000 runs and 750 wickets to his name in Kent Colours. With those stats, Steve-O, you're entitled to log on as late as you like. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> Cheers, well, You're well, good? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Um, it gives me a bit of a breather from the garden, actually. Yeah, been busy. Oh, 
the list gets longer and longer. Every time I walk downstairs, there's a list on the board. This is what I've got to do. I wipe one off and there's two more added. <laughs> yes, two solutions to that, you know, it's either a gardener or a flat. That's what you've got to do. Um, thank you very much to all of you who sent over advanced questions. The first of them comes from Sarah. And I think it's one that probably many of us want answering here is, uh, how is it to be back or almost back or at least back training? And how different has training been under these guidelines and restrictions that I suppose you're working under? steve do you want to start on this? How, how much training has been going on? Uh, the last couple of weeks, little bits really. It's, been, it's actually been pretty lonely. Um, it's been great to be back, but um, you know, you're out there bowling at a net, picking your, own, you know, picking your own balls up, walking back, and there's nobody else really around. So it's, um, yeah, it's been pretty tough, but um, great to be back bowling, great to be back batting. It was a good day today. We got back um, uh, bowling at batters, and um, that was good. Any sort of match scenario has gone on so far? Is it just all net stuff? No, just all nets. I think we start that next week. Okay. DBD, what have you been up to during this lockdown? Been keeping yourself trim and fit? No, it's, it's not been too bad, actually. Um, it's great to be back. Um, haven't seen the guys for quite a while. So, no, that's been the main thing, seeing some familiar faces, uh, uh, not on Zoom. But, uh, no, I had a good period over lockdown. I tried to keep myself busy. Um, I was with, was with some family in London, so uh, it wasn't all bad. And, um, yeah, just we had fitness competitions to keep us busy in the meantime. Quite a lot of cheating going on from some members but um no it was it was it wasn't the worst situation I mean with what's been going on but it's glad I'm glad to be back and I'm sure most of the others would agree and this this cheating that went on with these fitness competitions um any on tonight's panel at all maybe um one in particular uh <laughs> He's good at watching YouTube tutorials, if you were. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's this <laughs> about? <laughs> or his group. I, don't, I don't know about him, but his group, for sure. Uh, uh, a few questions raised. Okay, I'm, we'll have words tomorrow, <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> okay, so he's obviously referring there to Alex Blake, a man who spent a lot of time watching videos on the internet. Um, you wanted to mention the football, first of all, didn't you? Yesterday's football. Hello to Arsenal fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, one, there's one on this call. Um, named Daniel. Um, so yeah, me and Steve as Tottenham supporters didn't ha didn't hold much hope yesterday, but well, luckily we managed to sneak out a two-one somehow. Now a man who didn't score yesterday is number ten, Harry Kane. But the real number ten is here in the top right-hand corner of my screen, Alex Blake. So what have you been up to during this lockdown, keeping yourself fit? Um, I've actually been through a few phases, really. Uh, I think my first phase was the puzzle phase. I just seemed to do about three or four puzzles for some reason. And then I moved in, moved into the baking phase, started <laughs> baking a few cakes, and then that became bread. Um, and then kind of got bored of that after a while. So now I've just been doing fitness and getting back to training. Um, yeah, and, that's, and then doing my haircuts when I can. That's about it really for me, Stephen. Yeah, you've nailed the haircuts, no doubt about that. We haven't tried the bread, of course, so we can't comment on it. Um, have you had any net time so far? Yeah, I've had uh, so it's twice a week um, for the last couple of weeks. So my, my schedule is a bit different because I'm white ball. The rest of the lads are doing red ball, obviously. Um, the one that I find a bit interesting is they're having to throw some balls at stumps and then put all the balls in some, into a bucket of disinfectant, which is a bit... Bit of a new one, um, and then we have to wipe everything down. So that's been interesting, but it's uh, yeah, it's good to get back to it, really. And what about you, Heino? You are the very beacon of fitness. I just look at you and I just think fit, physically fit. And um, how about yourself? What have you been in the nets? What have you been up to? Yeah, pretty much like uh, what Blakey said. We've you find your find a way to to keep busy when you're not training and when you don't have to do fitness um but yeah i've also been i've been baking a lot and blakey and i we we do share our baking <laughs> photos with each other and um but yeah i think just it's and uh, luckily i've got a pregnant wife she's almost due so she's been keeping me busy and you know trying to keep her off her feet and cooking and cleaning at home but yeah i've been busy loving that we're back now nice to see the guys um Nice to be hitting and throwing again. Um, yeah, looking forward to this week. Um, luckily, I don't have 
um, Mr. Stevens in my pod, so you won't be bowling at me. Uh, yeah, I heard he's already got two two poles uh, this season so far, and we we haven't even had one net session. Well, I haven't, but no, it's been good. I'm just glad to be back. I don't know what's going on there. We've got one who's doing gardening, two are doing baking. Thank God you're here, Deeps. I'm keeping saying. <laughs> um, now, we've got a question in from Gavin here. We'll get Mary Berry on next week. She'll already be done with it. Uh, we've got Gavin on here who says, uh, how many of the panel, have any of the panel, sorry, been in contact at all with Joe or Zach Denley or Crawley uh, to get a perspective of what it's like playing behind closed doors? Anyone spoken to either of those two in the last few days? Anyone heard anything? Uh, I've spoken to I've spoken to Joe a bit, um, and yeah, he just said that the the thing that's the toughest for him is is just sitting at a dinner or a breakfast because they have to sit on one little small table, and then two meters in front of you, there's another guy sitting on a small table. So it's just it's it's almost you know you 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 all together, but you're not. You you just by yourself the whole time, and it's a bit strange. Um, but yeah, on the field you just there's no crowd, but you're still all together, luckily. And I see there's they're all just like high fiving and, and hugging, so there's no social distancing there on the field. Which is nice. But they said it was good. Good to be back on the park. Anyone got any concerns at all about um playing behind closed doors, particularly if we get to T twenty and there's still not a crowd in Steve? Have any worries about that? Uh the big thing for us is playing cricket, mate. So, yes, it's great playing in front of people, but we, we just want to get out there and do our job. Um, you know, win games for Kent and try and win trophies. See it behind closed doors. Obviously, we don't we don't want to be doing it behind closed doors because that's where, um, you know, the, the energy is and the buzz and the atmosphere and the band. You know, it's all there. So, it's um, yeah, for me, it is, the, the main thing is playing cricket. Blake, you love a crowd, and you, know? you love it in those big sixes, particularly at Beckenham, and the crowd feeding off what you're doing. And you may not be able to, you may not have that behind you. Well, I think it depends where it is. I mean, I don't mind there being no crowd at Essex. Um, that's, <laughs> just, that's Barrack Central. So um, I think I miss. Well, I think I miss the Oval crowd. That's always a, a great occasion. Um, but I, yeah, I guess it is what it is. It's going to have to find a different way to to get yourself up for it. Not that we're not up for it already, but obviously that helps and helps with the adrenaline and, and, and whatnot. So yeah, it'd be different, but I'm sure the players will still find a way to get themselves up for it. What about you, Deeps? You'll be okay with no one watching you live? Yeah, well, similar to the guys, um, first and foremost, we just want to get back playing cricket and yeah, I mean, some cricket is going to be better than nothing at all. But no, we will miss the, the Kent fans, especially at home. I do agree with Blakey, though. There's some away games, which we'll be thankful um, without some of the <laughs> language we get. But um, yeah, no, it's going to be a big miss. But you never know. Things could hopefully change. Yeah, I'm rather hopeful that they will, actually. I mean, if you can go and watch Open Air Theatre, for goodness sake, you can go to a cricket match sit in the Open Air Theatre, surely. Either it's both safe or neither are safe. Come on. So let's get some, let's get some people in at least by September. I'm, I'm very hopeful. Uh, next question came in from uh, David here. It's, it's aimed at you, Heino, and you, TBD. So what was it like to Captain Kent? What was it like to Captain Kent last year? Did it impact your own game at all? Deeds, you enjoyed wearing the old armband? Yeah, it was enjoyable um, in regards to my own game. You definitely, I personally, definitely, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it weighed on me, but I would definitely realise that as the captain, I'd have to doubly try and set a good platform for the team. Um, so it's just something to learn from. I don't necessarily think in the future I'd be like that because we're all there to do a job and. Um, but no, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had great help around me as well. Obviously, Heino, he had captained as well. So I had a lot of senior players behind me, which was great. Um, but no, I think, I think I've learned a lot from it. And um, one of my lessons I've learned is to not let it weigh too much on your performance and just go out and be a batsman or if you're a bowler, whatever. But no, that's my opinions on it. How difficult is it though, Heino? You're in charge of the team, especially you know, if it's a white ball game in the city, you've got to think you're bowling for change and that who's bowled how many and all that stuff. How hard is it 
for it not to impact your own game personally? Yeah, it's, it, it is tough. Um, even though you tell yourself this, you know, it, it shouldn't um, do anything to your to your batting or, or whatever, but it, it, it does a little bit every time. Um, you do feel you have to play that captain's innings or, or do something different. Um, but it's just getting yourself into into that mindset of listening. I'm, when I go out to bat, I'm just I'm just gonna play the next ball and I don't have to play differently. But captain captaining was, was such an honor, you know. It was it was just just great to have um, the backing from the whole team and and like Daniel said, that having guys like Steve O, Daniel, um, everyone just just backing you and and there's so much knowledge in the team. Um, Steve has played for 30 years, so you know to <laughs> <laughs> to just have um, everyone um, giving their knowledge um, actually made it easier. It was actually, it was actually great. Uh, Steve, you had a crack at this, didn't you, a few years ago? How, how long ago was this now? Four or five years ago? You, I remember you were captaining. Was it in T20s for, for a great brief spell? I did one game at the Oval. What a game to do as well. TV game, 25,000 in. <laughs> how did that go? TV <laughs> interview. Had to do the interview at the task. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it was definitely more than one game. Definitely more than one. I remember speaking to you after a game at, at Canterbury. So I think I remember you saying at the time, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I hope I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you still feel the same? <laughs> definitely, yeah. When you, especially when you're, you know, always bowling, batting in the middle, uh, uh, and then you've got to do the, like you were saying earlier about field changes, bowling, you know, changes, it's too much, too much for an all-rounder to sort of deal with. So, um, park it onto the opening bass. <laughs> All right. And um, Alex Blake, you, uh, you've done much captaincy in, in your, it's what, maybe your club career or any other time? Did a bit of age groups, um, done a bit of second team, but not for a little while now. Uh, it's all right. I don't mind it. I would take the opportunity if it came along, but, um, We've got enough captains at the moment who are doing a good job, so long may it continue. We have got a few captains, you're right. Um, live questions come in. You can send your questions in while we're chatting here. If we have a spare moment, I promise you we'll squeeze it in. Paul sent this one over and says, look, we've got a season coming out. It's going to be about two months long. Um, what do you hope the club can achieve in the limited playing time that's available? It's a good question because it's like, does anyone really have expectations of such a short season, Steve? Well, look, we've got there's a Bob Willis Trophy to play for, and then there's a 2020 competition. Um, you know, yes, prize money and all that stuff's been parked, obviously. Um, but it, you know, there's a trophy to win, it's you're still gonna have your name on the trophy if you win the trophy. So, um, yes, there's only five games, but we've got to do the best we can in the five games, and then the T20. You know, we've played many years where we've only had 10 games. So we can, you know, it's just about, we, we want to win trophies. You know, all we want to do is win games of cricket and win, win trophies for Kent. So we'll be looking to win both trophies. Hi, though. Have you had any sort of heads up yet about how much T20 you'll be playing? What else might be going on? Because we're still all waiting for the fine details. Do you, do you know exactly what you're expecting to be playing? No, I probably know as much as, as you. Um... Yeah, I just know there's going to be some four-day games, some champo games, um, and then a T20 competition, like Steve said, probably just 10 games, and then semi-final and final, something like that. Um, but yeah, I just want to re uh, reiterate what Steve said there is, what every game that we play, um, it doesn't matter how many it is, uh, we'll, just, we'll just play the best we can, and we still want to win every game we play for Kent, because we know it's such a, a great great team and great county um, and passionate county. We want to win trophies and who knows, this could be one way we can win two trophies. What about you, Blake? It could be the shortest season ever. You'll love it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's going to be a short season anyway, but it's even shorter. Um, I, we've A lot of our meetings, a lot of our Zoom calls have been focused towards T20 because um, that was really what we thought we were going to get at best um, and I think we we think we've got a team to win that competition and a lot of work and a lot of chat's gone into that um, so if that does come about and we get a chance to, to have a 2020 competition um, 
then hopefully we'll be we'll we'll be in a good place to sort of hit the ground running, especially from a tactical point of view. Um, don't know how much training we'll get in the build up to it if there's Red Bull, but well, I'll get a bit because that's all I do. But um, it should be should be good hopefully. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Hopefully we get one in September. I have to agree with something you said there about you feel like you've got the team to be very successful in T20, particularly if you think back to last season, the first half of the, the group stage. I mean, Kemp were absolutely on fire. I know it went a bit south after that, but the signs from that were fantastic. Yeah, I, I think we the last few years, we've obviously got to a couple of quarterfinals and it's a bit of unfinished business. I, I know that a lot of the squad here haven't been to a finals day. I know the likes of Joe and Darren have, um, and they're really the days that you, you want to be involved in as a, as a county cricketer. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely high on the agenda for a lot of us to, to go one step further than the court final, um, but also hopefully go on and win it. Um, so, yeah, that, that's like I said, that's what a lot of the focus has been in these chats. Um, and, and Bilbo's been really good with all that stuff. Um, so, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully one day or for the next few years we can make finals days and we can get over the line. What about you, Deeps? Do you feel really confident in the strength of the, the T20 team in particular? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've shown a lot of glimpses, as Alex said, over the last few years, and we just haven't quite put it together. Um, and, yeah, we've had a few good additions as well coming into the team. So I'm quite confident in the guys. Um, obviously, we're still waiting fixtures, stuff like that. But, no, I, I do think that we've got a lot of depth as well. Um, and especially, I mean, we played so well at home, um, especially defending scores. So hopefully the crowds will be back as we discussed last question and um, can get behind us. But no, even without them, I feel we'll definitely do well this year. And um, I'm really confident. The crowds will be back. Believe me, the crowds will be back. We have to Open believe. it. Yeah. yeah. Go to the bingo and go to the cinema, but you can't go to the... Come on. Uh, another question that's coming here. Steve, you kind of touched on this earlier when we were talking about your captaincy career, which was more than one game. You've obviously erased it from your memory. Um, it's coming from John here. It says, do you relish or do you hate TV games? I bet, Steve-O, you love them. They're good fun, aren't they? They're good fun. You've got... It's... I don't know. I actually go the other way, and I, I, it's you, you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself because there's cameras everywhere, and it's, you've actually just got to try and blank them out. Um, a bit like when you, you walk across the rope, and you know you know what your job's got to do. You got to either chase down, or you got to set up, or rebuild, or whatever it may be. Um, but in, yeah, when you're sitting there and you're seeing all the cameras around, it's uh, it's good, for, great fun. And of course, you particularly love the. The TV interviewer's captain. One thing, of course, you won't know, Steve, when there's a TV game on, because you're out playing, what, what you won't know is that all the pundits in the commentary box who retired quite a long time ago, they all bang on about, they all played with you. You know, they keep going on and on and on about it. They do. That's always, oh, did you play against, yes, I did play against Darren Stevens, yes, it was 25 years ago. So that, do you ever get on your nerves at all? Do you ever, do you ever hear about that? No, not with this first time ever, Steve. Thanks, mate. No, no, sorry, the truth uh, sometimes. Blakey, you love a TV game, don't you? Or do, do, you prefer, do you prefer a game of Beckenham where you're the face? Oh. Uh, I don't, well, I don't know. To be honest, with the TV games, you forget when you're out there, you actually forget that it's going on, but it's more about the build up and trying to look good and have your haircut in place. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, obviously, no, I, I love Beckenham, then I. You call me the king of Beckham yeah, yeah. or whatever, but um, but yeah, it's better. I like I like playing at, at Beckenham, to be honest. Um, it's always a good pitch, isn't it? So um, that's why I like playing there. But you just need to move the ground from HQ to Beckenham, don't we? Really? No, no, no. Those three guys we, are going to hate you. Did have done that ten years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's the king of Beckenham, by the way? You or me? I think you're the king of Beckenham. <laughs> no, nah, you you are there. You're the face. Yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're the face. I'm the king. Um, Hino, you love a TV match. Do you, do you really do you not notice it when it's going? You're in the heat of the battle. You don't really notice those cameras. Uh, I'm with Steve. It's, it's just it's it's a great feeling. Uh, crowds going, 
gets uh, just the excitement that when the when the TV's on and, and the crowd's going. And I know they say that, and I believe that, that Champo and Test cricket is the ultimate cricket, but it is it is just such a great feeling, especially there at um, at the Oval when uh, <clears throat> when the Sweet Caroline comes on and and the crowd's going and and you're in the middle there. It's a great feeling. Um, so I definitely, yeah, it's 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 awesome. And Deeps, these can provide an opportunity. These TV games. I remember when you were a very young lad, first in the team. I think it was probably a forty-over game, maybe down at Sussex or somewhere. But um, you know, you get you get talked about if you if you put in a performance, it can get you perhaps more notice than if you're doing this in Red Bull cricket. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great it's a great experience. Um, yeah, I don't. When the game's on, as Alex said, you don't really notice the cameras as such. Um, it's just like another game. Um, but no, it is great fun. Obviously, people can say what they want, but if you do well on the TV, um, it obviously, like you say, there's a lot of hype and stuff like that. So um, no, I do enjoy playing. I do enjoy playing on TV, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some this year. But it's an enjoyable experience for sure. Right, this next question. Um, we've got some questions here which are directed personally, and this one's for you, Steve-O. It's sent, well, it says it by Bernard, but I think actually it was sent in by Darren Stevens because it says you cemented yourself as a Kent legend and true favourite among, amongst the supporters. For your years of service and remarkable performances, what have been your personal highlights so far in a Kent shirt? Just before you answer that, it's important to say, of course, that there were some good times, particularly in T20, at Leicester before you even came to Kent. Yeah, we won uh, 2003, I think it was. No, 2004, we won a trophy there, 2020. Um, and got to a bit similar to here. We got to finals there, the one-day cup a couple of times. Lost that. Um, but my biggest highlight here would be obviously hitting the winning runs in 2007 at Edgebaston. Great day. Um, some great performances, hat-trick included with Ryan McLaren. Um, great knock by Keezy, getting his over the line in the semi-final against Sussex, 60-odd. Um, and then obviously winning against Gloucester in the final was, yeah, it was, yeah, one of the best feelings I've had. I remember that final particularly well. I wasn't there, I was watching it on TV. Um, what was it? Was it something like 13 off the final over? And there seemed to be, when they were panning to the dugout, some pretty glum faces, particularly the skipper at that time, as though perhaps the moment had gone. But... You obviously didn't think that way. 15 off the last, mate. Just, just to... Sorry. Yeah. And you had a balls to spare, didn't you? Uh, yeah, just two, just two balls to spare. <laughs> one, of them, one of them was a no ball, wasn't it, for goodness sake? Count. No ball, four wide. <laughs> yeah, there we go. They don't count then, does it? Um, right. But anyway, no, particularly... Was that, obviously, you didn't feel that, but I remember seeing these particularly worried faces. Yeah, it was... Uh, I think there's a couple of balls, he bowled a no ball actually and I hit a four and it was, and the umpires weren't sure. They just signalled no ball and a four and then um, me and Yasser were in the middle going that was the game over and the umpires, no, 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 you still need two to win and we were like, well, he's bowled a no ball. And then they checked and that was it, yeah, the game was won. So it was a bit of an anticlimax, but great win. All worth it in the end, all worth it in the end. We, we can throw this question open to the rest of you actually and talking about your career highlights. Blakey? Those Hampshire games in particular must be high on your list. Uh, yeah, I think so. That's what people tend to, when they talk to me about my knocks, it tends to be those couple. Um, what was it 2015? A few years ago now. Yeah. Uh, but like you said about playing on Sky, I think that's really, that's why it goes more, it goes more noticed because it was on Sky. Um, and, and then last year, wasn't on Sky, but I mean, just a couple of times that I've, I've managed to sort of, I don't know, swindle a win from somewhere. But I think um, people say, oh, what do you think about when, you, when you're doing that? But actually, when the game's quite far away from you, you, you kind of just relax and go for it. And, and we've spoken a lot, me, about when I play at my best. And that is kind of a bit more of a carefree approach. Um, and yeah, well, hopefully I can win a few more. But obviously, um, they've been two of the highlights for me. Shall I tell you something about that 2015 knock against Hampshire, as you say, was on TV. And at Canterbury that evening, there was the inter-university games going on. 
and uh, word was getting around what you're up to. I've never seen a pitch clear so quick. We were doing the presentations of it. Everyone just rammed into the pavilion, round the TV, no social distancing, wouldn't be possible now, but you cleared the ground like that. How good does that feel? <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yeah, obviously, you don't realise how many people are watching, do you? Um, but like I say, it, it, you see it, people must be seeing it all around the world, but Steve-O, nice little change-up. He's got, he's got to make use out of these one-day kits now. Yeah, yeah I ain't going to be using them. Um, <laughs> what's that? What's um, move on from me, don't need to talk about these rare knocks. Well, no, we love talking about it. It gives me a, a special buzz. Um, just to let you know, Steve, this, uh, is it Diana Ross? She's always changing her outfit throughout. Her, she does a cover, she just changes her outfit after every song. <laughs> How many more have you got to pull out for us? One more. Yeah, sticking that on. You've got a wig somewhere you can put on as well. Hi, no. Um, how about you? Career highlights and your, your brief Kent career so far, but um, there's been some good moments. Uh, yeah, I think 2018 stands out. Uh, those um, couple knocks uh, to get us into the semi finals and then into the finals. Uh, yeah, a couple knocks to, to help us get uh, win games, which was pretty special. Um, just a runoff, good, you know, just where you just, you kind of just know you're going to make runs. You're going to, from ball one, it just hits the middle of the bat. And, and those are times that you do uh, really, you, you absolutely love cricket. You absolutely love batting is when you just know you're going to score runs and and no one's going to get you out. I think that, that was unbelievable. That Sorry, go on. Go on I think that, that, that Royal London campaign was... I think that was one of my highlights, really, of my Kent career, that run that we went on. And Hino played an unbelievable tournament in that. It's just um, a bit of a shame that he ran himself out in the final. I wish he would have won it. But. <laughs> well, he did. But before that, I was actually going to mention the innings down at Worcester that got to the final. How special was that, Hino? Yeah, that was good. Um, I'm, I'm very bad with... Uh, my memory's not too great, but all I can remember was... We were struggling. Um, I know I had a, a couple of good cameos with, with guys. Um, and I just kept on saying to whoever came in, listen, it's not over. Let's take it as deep as we can. And I don't think a lot of people gave us um, any chance of, of, of finishing that game or, or winning that game. But it just shows if you, if you just stay there and you take it deep, um, anything can happen. And when Harry hit that last boundary, I didn't even watch because... I got out with, I think we needed two or three. And I was just sitting there in my chair thinking that I've just cost us this game, got us so close and then cost us the game. And then he hit that last boundary and it was, <laughs> it was amazing scenes on that balcony. <laughs> the celebrations on that balcony. <laughs> yeah, that no, was pretty special. That was one of my highlights. Okay, so there's not too much wrong with your memory then. You pretty much told us about it all there, Debs. Um, what about <laughs> You know, you know that's a trick, don't you? Oh, I can't remember it. It's a fishing, isn't it? Oh, you were brilliant, darling. <laughs> uh, DVD, what about you? Um, career highlights for you so far? Um, so, as, from a team point of view, definitely that one-day campaign. Um, just the most sort of hype just felt as a squad because we haven't been to too many knockout games um, or deep into competition so that was really special and getting to play at Lords uh, that was a great even though we lost I mean the whole occasion going the night before and and um, yeah it just felt like a proper event that day that was awesome from a team point of view um, personally I'd say my 100 against Surrey in the T20 uh, my only 100 that was a great day for me and to win the game for Kent as well um, I'd just come back from a quite a long injury layoff before that game so made it all the more special um, that's definitely one of my favourite moments um, and then yeah I mean probably I got 90 odd against Essex at Beckenham a couple of years ago in a T20 to start the campaign um, yeah I'd say those are my two probably favourite white ball knocks um, in the last few years for sure and you were talking there of a performance against Surrey. A question came in from Leyden who says, which county do you most enjoy beating and why? Well, we all know the answer, Surrey. Is anyone on this panel, any of the four of you, going to disagree with that? 
the county we enjoy beating most is Surrey. Steve-O? Yeah, Surrey, Essex has got a bit there. Yeah. yeah it's because you love Essex, don't you? <laughs> Essex, Essex is Steve-O's team, isn't it? It's, he's renowned for doing well against them. And anyone else? Anyone else going to disagree with this? We all going sorry, Essex. Is that it? Anyone else on this list? Yeah, sorry for me. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, Deeps, happy with that? You're very happy, yeah. Good. You know, we've done loads of these sessions. I think this is the 13th, and we've been back to the 90s, 2000s, 80s. We even went back to the 70s. <laughs> that was some fun getting them to log on. Um, we've been back a long way here, and so it doesn't matter what generation of Kemp player you are. Sorry is always the answer to that question. Scott's question is aimed at you, Hino. And it says here, and this is going to be a touchy subject for someone else on this panel, you've won the Alan Elam Cup for Fielder of the Year <laughs> two years in a row, <laughs> which should be renamed the Mitch Clayton Trophy, of course. Um, has the way you train for fielding changed with your career? It's a good question. Is anyone who's, I think, played at any level might start off as a rocket fielder, but as we get older, it diminishes. But it doesn't seem to for you, Hino, at all. I don't change the way I feel in any competition or um, when I get older. Uh, I absolutely love fielding. Um, I, I think I love fielding more than batting, which is, uh, I think, strange for, for people. It's um, weird. Yeah. But but to get in a team, you can't just say I'm a great fielder, so so you have to bat as well. So, so I've, I've worked a little bit on that as well. Um, but yeah, fielding is just uh, I've always said, and I, I keep telling uh, young guys coming in that in your career you'll probably field 90% of your career. Um, you won't you won't bat for you know once score 200 or bat for 10 hours or bat through innings every every time you get out. You will field more than you will do anything else. So if you don't enjoy that, then why are you doing it? Um, yeah, I just absolutely love love running around, diving around, and and when I can do something special, it's it's a great feeling, especially when it's when it's on TV. It does have the uh, advantage, though, doesn't it? Like the, the, the lower to the ground sort of, you know, swoops aren't, around. Aren't we the same same height, Steve? We're <laughs> short, man. A bit closer to the grass. <laughs> Oh, we the same height? Get out of it. What are you? Four foot ten? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in centimeters. I don't know. <laughs> well, he spends all his time bowling, doesn't he, Steve? He doesn't bother with the fielding too much. So, you know, he gets out of this one. Um, but I see what you see. I see what you mean, Steve, about the low center of gravity. I think it's the polite way of putting it. Oh, yeah. Um, just want to ask Blakey. Blakey, what do you, what do you feel about um, Hino having won the field of the year last two years? Uh, Are you going to get that trophy you... back? It's your, I thought, you used to have your name on it. Yeah, I thought you were going to say this. I used to, right? I used to be, in, my name used to be in the hat for it, and now this bloke turned up and I can't get anywhere near it. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, he, he's one of the better ones on the circuit, isn't he? So I guess I accept that. I keep trying to improve every year, but um, yeah, like I say, it's tough to beat him. I must say, I wouldn't... Being, being in the field, sorry, being in the field with a guy like Blakey, uh, it does push me to to work hard and stuff, which would definitely help. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> well, do you know, obviously those of us who played at a much, much lower level, you know the guys that used to love fielding, which probably won in the whole club, um, and then they come along, someone else would be a good fielder, and they'd have a chat in the corner, and oh, I used to get on my nerves so much. Uh, I would say, Blakey, that um, your name it didn't used to be in the hat for the fielder of the year. It used to be engraved like about July time. So, uh, you know, that's going to come back. I, I feel confident yeah. about it. No, we'll see. What I will say is, though, that as, as an actual fielding unit, we've come, not come a long way. We've always been all right, but actually we, we pride ourselves on, on how we fielded. And I think that, that one-day campaign a couple of years ago when we did get to the final, we were, we were really one of the better fielding units um, on the circuit. And I think it credit to coaches as well, like they pushed us to, to really be a, a good a gun fielding unit. Um, so, yeah, it's what we pride ourselves on. Helps the, helps the bowlers out a bit. Yeah, interesting, actually, when we've been back through all the decades on these Spitfire sessions, when we went back to the 70s, there was no mention of fielding whatsoever. <laughs> uh, next question directed expressly at you, Daniel Bell Drummond. Uh, I've come in from Martin here. He says, I believe you're just one of five Kent men. See you then, Steve. Uh, I believe you're just one of five Kent men to score a century. 
in every format for Kent. I didn't know that stat. How does that feel? Obviously very good, yeah. Um, it helps batting at the top of the order for sure. Um, nice kit there, Darren. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it helps being at the top of the order for sure, but no, um, it's just, um, it just shows that I've improved and I'm quite, I can, I'm capable in all three formats. So uh, hopefully I can continue that and um, and definitely do do well for Kent and do the best that I can. But no, I'm quite proud to be one of the five people. I'm sure there will be more, the way the game is changing going forwards. But um, no, it's a good stat to be a part of. Yeah, it's a fantastic stat. Are you one of those batsmen who thinks a lot or thinks very little about moving from the way you're going to bat your style from red ball to white or from 50 overs to 20? Is it something that you, you work on a lot or is it something that happens perhaps a little bit more naturally for you? Um, I, try, I try to work on it quite a bit. Um, obviously, with the congested fixtures, sometimes you just get thrown in uh, to, to either format. So that can sometimes work quite well um, just because you have no choice. You have to get on with it. But no, I do try and apply myself differently to the... I, I think I'd come a bit unstuck if I tried to use T20 in the Red Bull stuff. But um, no. Yeah, just to let you know, Steve, we've got about 15 minutes, Steve. Have you got any other outfits you want to squeeze into this? <laughs> no more. <laughs> a nice frock hanging up somewhere or something like that. <laughs> the last of the specifically aimed questions is for you, Blake, who came from Jamie, uh, says, what is it about the big moments that you're able to find the big performances? Uh, what is it that you think about? Of course, we want to know. Uh, whilst you're in the middle, Jamie's personal highlights, seeing you finish off the run chase, uh, Hampshire, those two games we mentioned, and Surrey in 2016. But you are the finisher, Blakey. So what is it? Do you, do you think about it at all? Just happens, does it? I touched on it earlier, didn't I? Well, it's almost when the game's sort of gone. and Not gone, but it's a long way off, and I seem to play at my best. Um, which which I should probably learn from actually. It's I'm 31 now, so I probably should know my game a bit better. But um, yeah, I think it's just those sort of that carefree attitude because I don't, I don't, I'm not that I don't think we could win it, but it's almost I have to just open up and go for it. And and those are the times when I've I've been at my best. And Steve O tells me all the time. He said that's when you play at your best. Um, so yeah, I, well, hopefully I've. And put that in, into place for, for the coming years um, and actually win a few more games. Obviously, nice to win a few, but I think I should probably win a few more. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it, like I say, it's not a lot that goes through my mind. I know you keep referring to what goes through my mind, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's it, really. Um, does, the, um, does the lost cause scenario, does that give you that sort of lovely bit of freedom to just go and do <laughs> I got my shout out to Johnny Dark, but he's FaceTiming me. Um, say that again. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> Cancel this. Where's, where's Steve gone? He said, "Does it give you more freedom uh, when you know the game's gone?" Yeah, oh, we're back. Uh, is he back? Sorry, lads, I'm back. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, like I say, like when when I just have to open up, like you say, it gives me more freedom. I don't really think about too much. I don't really think about getting out or or trying to find ones. I just think about hitting the boundaries, and uh, I guess that opens me up a bit. It gets my my bat swing going, and it's all pretty simplified. And I think that's um, that's really what it comes down to: just simplifying it and, and playing my way that I played even as a junior and growing up. I was quite an aggressive batsman. Um, so, yeah, it's something to take from that. I've just received a message, by the way, to say that the 150-year commemorative shirt that Steve was uh, is now cricket shop. Stephen, could you, give, could you give us a 12? Could you just give us a little spin, love? So we can see. The, that's it. Junior yeah, semi. That's it. Spin us round. Yeah, lovely. Turn back around. Close Sit down again. And breathe out. Yeah, That's yeah. it, you can breathe out. <laughs> He's skin tight one. Uh, next question, Nigel, who was your cricket hero as a kid and why? I know, who, who did you love when you were a kid? 
I didn't really watch a lot of cricket when I was a kid. Um, I still feel like a kid, so I can just say anyone now. Um, I used to to love watching uh, Peter Kirsten play. Uh, yeah, Peter Kirsten was, was one of my favorites. And then I, I always loved um, Andrew Flintoff and Shane Warne. I loved watching them bowl. So that's probably my, my two favorites to, to just watch. And then obviously the, the West Indians, uh, the Wendy's, you know, Kirtley Ambrose and Courtney Walsh. Just I love watching them bowl. What about you, Deeps? Who did you pride yourself on when you were growing up? Yeah, in a, a weird way, similar to Heine, like the cricketers I like watching probably weren't that similar to me. Um, I love I love watching Brian Lara bat. He was one of my heroes growing up. Um, I'd probably say KP as well from the 2005 Ashes, especially that I was already playing junior cricket, but that's one thing that vividly stuck with me. And um, yeah, seeing this, this guy just turn up and dominate the world's best bowling. Um, so those two, I'll probably say were my, yeah, were my uh, heroes growing up. And I've always, I've always liked watching Dale Stane, not that I've ever bowled like him or want to face him, but um, yeah, I've always found him to be a class act. So those are probably my three, because Stane's a lot more recent and I've had the pleasure of playing against him, but um, Lara and um, KP for sure. Come on in, Steve-O. Who was your cricket hero when you were a lad? WG Grace. <laughs> Bradman. No. No, you, you've got people that you play in the same team with. No, it don't work out. <laughs> uh, it's got to be Viv to me. Um, just the swagger and the way he went about it. A bit like Blakey, what Blakey's been putting on there. Sort of carefree batting, taking everybody on. Wandering out in his cap and the dominance he had out in the middle. Um, was Viv playing when you were a kid? Huh? Was Viv playing when you were a kid? I went and watched him when I was a kid at, at my hometown, Hinkley, actually. He was playing for Glamorgan against Leicester. Um, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, quality. Um, and then this day and age, um, yeah, KP was, KP was definitely up there. The way, similar to KP, really, the way he went out and dominated, um, put bowlers under pressure from ball one. Go on then, Blakey, give us a full set on this. You're going to say KP well, as well? No. Um, Deeb's yeah. actually nicked, nicked one of mine. Um, Brian Lara, I used to like watching because he was a flamboyant left-hander. Um, but in terms of England, I used to love Graham Thorpe. Um, mm. And I, I remember I, I asked for like Kookaburra bubble bat from, for Christmas because he used bubble. And then I, I got all the... That's why I got sponsorship with Kookaburra back in the day before he shouldn't promote them. i actually with Missouri now. Missouri. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, but I used to, uh, this is Missouri. But I used to, yeah, I used to um, be Cookabar just because the Grand Fault was, and I love the bubble pads and the bubble bat. So Grand Fault. You know, of all the all the people we've ever asked that question, of, this, you're the only person who was a Grand Fault. I love the originality of it. Um, yeah. Gary's question here. We're going to move on to the star question in just a moment. By the way which wins the prize courtesy of our fabulous partners, Spitfire, Shep and Neem. But before that, Gary wants to know, what advice would you give to your younger self now if you were starting over again? Steve-O, when WG was whispering in your ear, what, what sort of advice would you have given yourself? Uh, um, leave a few more balls. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I just, for me, it's the, it, it's the enjoyment and the fun factor. Uh, however you go about wanting to play, being a top order batter who wants to buy at bat time or a middle order batter who wants to dash it around, whatever it is, I think that the fun factor is, is high up there. Um, and it's one thing that we've, we've brought in over the last few years. I think that Blakey touched on with the fielding a couple of years ago. AD, you know, he stepped our fielding up when he joined us. Um, but one of the big things in it was about having fun and enjoying it and a bit of banter and a bit of competitiveness and um, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, for me, it would be enjoy enjoy what you do. Find 
you know, however you go about it, find a way of making it fun and enjoyment. The cliche goes, Steve, that the older you get, the more that you enjoy it. Is that true? I think you have to because you don't know if it's uh, it's all going to end. Just <laughs> <laughs> talking of talking of which, actually, you know, here we go with the two month season, and everyone's thinking, oh, how much longer Steve is going to go on for? So this definitely means you've got to play next year because you know you're obviously how can I put this politely in the autumn of your career? So looking at another two years, if we count this as one. Honest answer. Yes. I can't go out on a two-month season. That's what I wanted to hear. Go on, Dazza. I can't do it. I, I'm, <laughs> I've had a bit of time off. The body's rested. But I've still played a bit of cricket in the winter. Um, you know, I feel as... I've up my fitness this year. I feel as fit as I've ever been. I've got the bit between my teeth. I, I can't say no. So I'm, I'm all, over, all over playing another year. All over it. My God, we've done 13 of these and that was the best, most emotional, fantastic comment that we've had throughout all of them. <laughs> when up a bit myself here. Um, that bit, that's got me there, that has. Um, Hino, what advice would you have given your younger self? Look at Steve-O's career and, 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 and <laughs> just be like him. Enjoy it till you're 43. That's it. It was it. So you're looking at Steve O's career. Give yourself that <laughs> advice. Anything, anything perhaps a little bit more useful for our audience than that? Um, yeah, I would just say enjoyment. Um, because like Steve said, uh, you never know when it's when it could finish. It could be an injury. Um, hopefully not. But yeah, just enjoy every second and um, keep on working hard. You know, um, try and be better than the guy next to you. Uh, it's it's a it's a tough thing to do because there's a lot of people who want to be uh, in, in, in the first 11, but just, just keep on working hard and, and never give up. Uh, yeah, just, just enjoy every second out there. Uh, Blakey, you love doing a bit of coaching. Don't you really enjoy your coaching, of the youngsters in particular? Um, so what are you yeah. telling them? What are you telling them maybe that you didn't tell yourself when you were that age? I just tell them to hit the ball, to be honest. Uh, I tell them to hit it hard, pick, pick their bat up. But I, I'm trying to do a bit of a power heat, power hitting niche. So, um, but if I was to go back, I, I would probably, because I'm more of a short format player, I would actually probably try and nail down particular shots. Um, I don't know, like the paddle or the reverse sweep or whatever. Um, but the other big thing is I would actually make sure I was a three-dimensional player I'd actually worked on the bowling even my seam I'd have carried on my seam a bit more or I'd turn to spin a bit quicker um just I just feel like if you're a three-dimensional cricketer you can bat and bowl you're likely to get in more teams um that's probably one thing I would I would change if I go back um well there's still plenty of time isn't there and we've seen you turning your arm over now a little bit is that something you're going to develop more hopefully yeah I'm still working on it um in the winter, I changed my run up a bit, and feels like it's it's going all right. It's still a lot of room for improvement, but even if I can offer two overs or three overs in a T20, then that's got to be better than than none. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it continues. Yes, particularly in T20, the more options for the captain, the better. Um, DBD, you're looking back through those old photographs, and you're thinking, yeah, there I am, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. 10 years ago, what should I have done then? What would I tell myself now? Uh, very similar to the guys, really. Um, one thing I would add is I'm quite jealous of some of the guys who have played like racket sports as a kid and like Billings and um, Northeast, guys like that. They have seriously good hands. Um, so I would definitely have carried on playing different sports uh, a lot longer. If I was a kid again, um, just to get that all-round side of cricket, and um, and then similar to what Hino said, just cherishing all the moments like we've been able to fly the world, all of us um, meet different people, and just not getting caught up in the pressures of cricket at times. Just knowing that what you're doing is a is a blessing, and um, 
and yeah just take it for what it is that's what I've still got a lot of time hopefully but I have played I made my debut in 2011 so those are lessons I've learned and um and yeah but all very similar like agree with Blake as well like you have to as a kid now definitely try and do all three things very well the way the game's going now, can I just say, before we move on to the star question, thank you very much to all of you over all these weeks we've watched who sent in questions. I do apologise if we never got around to yours, but time is always our enemy on these Spitfire sessions. Well done to everyone who's won that prizes courtesy of Shepard Neves Spitfire. And the final one of those, the final winner is Paul, because this is the star question which has been selected by our panel here, or at least those of us logged on on time uh, it comes from Paul and it says if you could play with any player from Kent's history who would it be and why let's start with you Deems you, you I think you were you were instrumental in selecting this question if I remember rightly so who would you love to play with from Kent's past that you never got the chance to um I'm being a bit annoying I'm gonna go two but I'll 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 get an answer in the midst of the question um so my two were Simons and Carl Hooper. Just the stories the guys tell of them. Uh, sorry, Blakey. Um, <laughs> he just keeps, he just keeps, keeps nicking my answers, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but um, both two rounders, and yeah, listening to Matt Walker talk about both of them actually, because he during his time he played with both, and he just said that they were streets ahead of everyone. Their natural talent was amazing and they did all three forms that all three forms of the game really well and I think they're both very I don't know if this is a good thing or not but both apparently very temperamental and if if it was their day and someone had annoyed them they would just suddenly tear it up and win the game for Kent easy as you like so I definitely would have liked to have played with those two but I think I go Simons I saw more of him I went to watch him play at Beckenham at Blakey's home ground, um, well, where Blakey's the king of anyway. Um, base. And yeah, that base. was, yes, yeah, the base, you're the king, sorry. Um, and that was a special moment for me and just hearing the guys talk about him. So I'd have to say Andrew Simons. Steve, when you started playing for Kent, was that just after Andrew Simons? It was, it was just after, then was he still around? I think Simo finished off. Four, so just before I came. Right, right okay. Never played so with him. Can't give us any stories then, sadly. Um, now, who would you love to have played with from Kent's past? Uh, can I say two? You can say as many as you like, darling. <laughs> so, um, the legend himself, uh, Mr Underwood, Sir Mr Underwood, um, yes. deadly, uh, just watching... Just watching some of the old clips of him bowling and standing at first slip would have been a dream. Obviously, about ten yards back, I think his his slips were further back than mine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd love to have played with Deadly. Um, and then the other one, uh, he was only here for a short stint, but uh, I've met him a few times. Um, Steve War. Um, so just to, you know, it wasn't the prettiest of batters, but he, he knew how to get the job done in, in any format. Um, you know, his, his stats speak um, for themselves. Um, but just yeah, cricket brain, um, a captain, yes, it was a legend side, but the way he, he went about um, getting the best out of those players would have been interesting to listen to. Um, but then just batting the other end of, uh, with him as well and just watching how he did it, it would have been, it would have been class. That's been a recurring theme, actually, in all these sessions. Someone who had such a short stint with the club, Steve Waugh, but gets mentioned so much. We talk about impact in a short spell of time. And can you imagine facing Derek Underwood on an uncovered pitch? No, thank you very much. Hi, no. Any names you can give us from Kent's illustrious past? Uh, I've, I've got to say, um, I would have loved to play again with Walks. <laughs> uh, j just um, him being the coach and all, and, and just seeing his his attitude and, and just the way he is, I think it, it would have been would have been great fun. And obviously, he's a legend. And uh, yeah, I would have loved to play with him. Um, but also, Martin van Jarsveld, he was my my captain, my mentor, um, you know, my role model when I started playing in South Africa. Um, played with him for years. And uh, yeah, just 
enjoyed um, playing with him and, and having him the captain. So, yeah, that was good. I really enjoyed that. And Blakey, you're last to go on this question. I know DBD's kind of drained you well here with your answers. Anyone yeah, else you can throw at us? Well, Steve-O took the other one, but um, <laughs> All right, thanks, I'll, go with, I'll go with AP Titch Freeman just because he took about a million wickets and um, you wouldn't do any fielding time because he just took so many wickets. <laughs> yeah. um, I think he used to take 300 a year like on the regular. Um, but actually, my actual answer was going to be Andy Simons. Um, just because he's my sort of cricketer, really, he, he whacks it out of the ground and bowls a bit, dives around in the field, and seems like, well, from some of the stories I've heard, he seems like he, he used to have a laugh off the pitch as well. So, and Simon's for me. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much, Tish Freeman, by the way. Don't forget, in those days, they played squillions of games. Sorry, you wanted to come back on. Yeah, I'll confirm. No, I was just going to say, yeah, they played a lot of games. But... <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah, Titch Freeman didn't bowl as many overs as Darren Stevens, though. That is also a fact. Um, guys, time has whacked us around the face. That is it. That is the end of this Spitfire session. The final one for the time being, but they will be coming back. We're putting it on pause because we're getting ready for some cricket. And we're also hopeful that you'll be able to join us uh, very soon. Uh, down at the Spitfire Grab, particularly for T20. But in the meantime, thank you for all your questions. Well done, Paul. You're winning the prize courtesy of Shepard Neem. And it just remains to say thank you very much to our panel. Hi, No Kuhn. Great to see you. Hi, No. See you in a few weeks, hopefully. Darren Stevens, the man of many outfits. Thank you very much. I know that is, you have got me tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to go straight to bed after this because I'm, I'm, I'm a wreck. Kiss it. <laughs> Get out Kiss of the it. badge. <laughs> I don't mean it. Uh, DBD, thank you very much. Great to see you. See you in a few weeks' time. You too. And Alex Blake, the face of Beckenham, the Mary Berry of Hayes. This Great is, to have it's you. It's also what I'll be doing. It's my Blake rap. Uh, it's my circuit. I just, got, I just got to show. Someone told me I've got to get it on there, so I've got it on. What is no, that? Blake rap? Yeah, what, a uh, Blake rap. Yeah, it's, it's many reps as possible, but I've just put my name in front of it instead. <laughs> Well, that's fascinating. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you to, uh, Cheers, you Merrick. Great to have you all with us for the last 13 weeks, and we'll see you sometime soonish on another Spitfire session. We'll see all these guys in just a few weeks. Take care. Cheers, Steve.